Moving on, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has relaxed its initial restriction on the repatriation of forex proceeds by international oil firms operating in the country. Now, in a circular dated May 6, 2024, signed by the Director of Trade and Exchange Department, Hassan Mahmoud, the Apex Bank said oil firms can now spend 50% balance of the repatriated export proceeds on financial obligations. In February, the Apex Bank stopped international oil companies from repatriating 100% of foreign exchange proceeds to their mother companies overseas all at once. Now, the Apex Bank had said international oil firms could repatriate 50% of their proceeds in the first instance and then the other half after 90 days. Now, international finance and economic analyst Mukhtar Mohammed joins me now for further discussions. Good morning to you, Mukhtar. Thank you, Justin. Good morning. Yeah, so Mukhtar, let me just paint the scenario. I was just going through my phone, and one of the fintechs uh, that I, I, you know, I do transactions with sent me some update asking me to that my debit card is still waiting. I just gave them my Ebo eye that okay, debit card now will not start charging me for insurance fee, maintenance fee, you know, all those fees. But the truth is that Nigerians have to deal with a bunch of bank charges like transfer fee, stamp duty, card issuance, and maintenance. SMS charges, USSD charge, VAT, uh, VAT on SMS, and now an additional half percent for cyber security. Mokta, uh, what is really going on? I think, uh, Justin, so the cyber security one is the worst tax I've seen in the history of Nigerian, uh, Nigerian financial sector. We must say the way it is. Um, I've never heard it in any place in the world whereby citizens will begin to pay for cyber security. It has never happened. So what we are doing now that they are telling us to provide our own cyber security by paying for it. Yeah, if it is a bank that are doing this, you will even understand because it's the banking platform that you are using. You are not using the Office of the National Security Advisors uh, platform, uh, by internet backbone or whatever. We are using the backbone of the bank, and yet they are telling you to pay to the office of the national security advisor. Mm. Even when I do a transaction in my in my using my 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 check, of, I mean my check, and I'm I'm issuing a check of even ten million, I don't pay CUT of fifty thousand naira. Mm. So now, for every digital transaction that we do a, a, with ten million as my minimum, I will pay a CUT of fifty thousand naira. Hmm. Justin, fifty thousand naira. That's if you do, um, if you do uh, uh, one million, you are going to pay five thousand naira hmm. on CU on just that that just one transaction. So for me, I think um, this is the worst financial bill uh, I've ever seen in my life, and hopefully, the government we 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 resolve, we we we. we, we we reverse it well, because they have book. to they have to re, uh, reverse it because i'm trying to do the math right now so for instance uh, you're transferring um about a thousand naira. that means for each one thousand that you're transferring you have to pay a cyber security fee of about five naira that's what it means so if you're doing the numbers you can imagine how much you would pay but if you look at all of this now the government has been talking about cash light cash less transactions isn't this, in a way, discouraging all of that? I mean, I'm supposed to pay half a percentage for every transaction. That's just not fair. I'd rather get all the cash and do cash payment instead of having to pay some outrageous charge for each transaction that I do. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You you rather keep your you rather you rather keep your 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 money in 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 in, in the uh, in. You rather keep your money in the bank, I mean, in your house, than 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 um, than taking it to any. No, oh, Mukta, we can hear you. Okay, you rather keep your money in the bank than um, taking it to. I mean, to keep your money in the house than taking it to uh, to uh, to do any transaction with uh, any of these banks again, because again, uh, like you said, financial inclusion. We've been scrambling for financial inclusion, especially for those people in the rural area. So how have we been, where we've been trying to do POX? And you know, Justin, the annoying thing about this bill is that it does not even make provision for POX or other other um, other uh, uh, people to make their 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 own uh, uh, payments. Or maybe 
it's 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 not it's not a bill that I'm excited about. I mean, in the history of Nigeria, and I, I I want to be challenged whether there's any way in the world that we they, they, they do such a thing. Okay, let's still try to get a bit of um. <clears throat> Uh, dimension uh, perspective into all of this. The Cybersecurity Act was enacted in 2014, right, and amended in 2015. But what did we miss in the nine years uh, to implement? Why now? I really don't get it. I don't know. I think um, I think uh, somebody have pointed it out to me, maybe because the government also have been looking for means mediums to earn a foreign direct investment they are not getting it so all of a sudden now uh, they are now beginning to look at um taxing the already tax nigeria for me that is um that is what i think is the problem at the moment uh they, they, they seems to be looking the investors are not coming so at the world bank and others is telling them that we need to widen your your tax bracket and uh, one of the best place to widen your tax bracket is also begin to tax the already tax and also begin to tax every Nigeria. And that's for me, I think that's just um, what I'm seeing. This government and most of these taxes, most of these taxes they are doing is for white elephant project, uh, projects that are not going to be beneficiary to the ordinary Nigeria, provided that they are not putting food on the table of the ordinary Nigeria. So mm -hmm. I think um, it's, it's something that I really uh, am not excited about. Okay, before we leave uh, the cybersecurity level, let's just, let's talk about uh, bank charges generally. You know, when I asked uh, the initial question, I talked about how we've been subjected to all sorts of, you know, charge, SMS. You get charged for SMS for, for receiving SMS or your transactions. You get charged VAT on the SMS. You get charged uh, for transaction for inflows and outflows. You get charged for. Uh, using your atm card for issuance for even when your card is not in use you're still charged maintenance fee i mean it's just can't the banks okay fine in as much as you said that the banks are not the ones responsible for this particular charge when it's been imposed on them by the uh, cbn let's talk about the charges generally can the banks look for other ways of making money or or how how can it how is it really done internationally what's the best practice for it internationally um, um, there's no service from any bank that is free oh. you have to pay for the services okay um whether it's cut whether you mean they, are, they have infrastructure but they are going to pay uh, a token of what um, uh, those charges are going to be it's not like what they are telling us to pay now we are you are virtually looking at uh, share infrastructures in some developed economy in the world oh. um, like in, in america most of their banking platform infrastructure is shared it's not an infrastructure that uh, is, is just used by, Nigeria, by one one platform alone. So I think uh, in this area, I think the challenge is um, the same to have just um, decided because it's not the banking only. Remember, it's coming from the CBN, and the CBN is in cyber security. And this, the, you see, the, 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 the challenge about it is that the money will be paid to the Office of the National Security Advisor. Mm -hmm. And that is where I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I don't know what rule is the national security advisor providing with the bank in terms of cyber security mm -hmm. what rule we need to know the rule that the Nat office of national security advisor have been praying in the area of cyber security now is it that we want to be the national cyber security and every nigeria will have to pay for the building of those national se cyber mm -hmm. security and i asked myself again i said so uh, where is taxpayers money going to where is taxpayers money going to so where are we paying this money to where uh, taxpayers so when i pay tax uh, i still have to pay for my security even now most nigerians yeah. we actually pay actually for our security yes, but they are telling us to pay for national security again yeah. so and this time for cyber security saying oh nigeria is prone to cyber attack and so are we the citizen now they want to pay to build a cyber security that cannot be attacked or it's uh, uh, justin i i have I've tried to think this thing through through the day through the night through this money, it, it's it's not adding up. It's not mm. adding up. All right, let's uh, let's just leave that for one minute. Of course, I'm sure reactions will still treat that term development uh, in coming days. Now, another report that is also worrisome from June to August this year: approximately 16% of Nigerians will face significant food insecurity. I'm even thinking that is high because right now Nigerians are even still very hungry. They they're living in hunger right now it's been very very hectic uh, being a nigerian in terms of putting food on your table in as much as we have had several discussions and the government have made several pronunciations over time but 
one will not just see that report and just uh, you know relax what can we do to alleviate this issue it is really alarming that reports like that just come out and you know nothing really happens justin uh when you look at those reports uh, i'm not shocked about what is happening because again uh, you, you see that's why i say this government have not been cohesive in coming up with their policies you see the, the the physical side we're doing and the monetary side we do doing their own because what we saw the cbn governor was telling us some some weeks ago that the inflation that we saw in the month was due to federal government intervention intervention mm -hmm. program is presented in the area of yes. food production and then here we have a report is just coming out that in the next few days we'll, we'll have um, many nigerians that will not be able to eat so it doesn't add up sometimes when you see all these uh, policies from both the physical and the monitoring side. So uh, I, I think we know the challenges that are there, high cost of production, um, insecurity majorly is what is driving the cost of um, um, food up. And if you look at the inflation, of food has gone up by about 40% the last time. So I think basically the challenge has to do with uh, with the, the the fight that we are going going through, especially in the era of banditry, and so most of the goods that are coming from this northern part of Nigeria, which are perishable goods, don't get them to place to, to Nigeria, to Lagos or the most urban cities in Nigeria. And when sometimes they do, uh, they tend to come with high levels from different um, uh, government agency. So, and that is why sometimes when you see government coming up with other procedure, you, you tend to be very sad about it. I think it's a wake up call and the government should be able to do something about it uh, food security is the key to uh, economic prosperity of any nation no matter how wonderful infrastructure you have and you don't have food on your table i don't think you see any value in that infrastructure rather you you some of them with destroy this infrastructure and may even be looking for a way to loot this infrastructure to be able to feed themselves so i think it's something that government should take seriously food security in any nation mm. is not something the government should take lightly. All right, before we leave food security and talk about our final discussion for today, I want to get your opinion. I just want to, you know, jog um, maybe your memory and just uh, get your reactions concerning this. You know, just the other day, I was in the market. I wanted to make vegetable soup. So I couldn't understand how the price of ugu that we you know cultivate locally and we have all around nigeria will be so so high i love vegetable soup by, by the way so i don't really get it i asked the lady how come it is this expensive is it that we are not cultivating this pumpkin leaves or what exactly she gave uh, the uh, the reason she gave for the uh, the price increment because it was really so small i had to buy so much she said uh, we are now exporting uh, pumpkin seed that brought to the detriment of uh, you know local farmers. How does that really work? That is, for me, that's not a problem. I think if we are exporting for locals, I think that will not be a problem. If we are exporting, that may be any effects. Mm. But I, I think the woman is just being economical, uh, trying to justify. But the main reason is that. Uh, Ogu may be pro produced locally, but what are the cost of production of Ogu? Mm. Uh, Ogu is produced in the rural area. What is the transportation that you have to move? That good transportation has gone up. Uh, whether you are moving it by diesel or you are moving it by by by, by, by PMS, so transportation has gone up. Um, again, a, a, a lot of things that um, that that add up to production also have gone up. There's no power and. Uh, so it's not just the one thing to because you are locally producing it doesn't mean that because you are locally producing it the car that the woman will take to bring the goods to the country the the, the, the uh, some of the uh, 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 the tools or whatever what try the if those cars get break down the motor parts are not produced here so they have to import it so the, the guy that is a driver will increase his cost of transportation and sometimes the routes where you get these goods coming from also are also not very more terrible and the market like i said again they, those women will be paying taxes to local mm. government to 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 market agents and all that so they'll pass those all those courses to you so it's not just in terms of uh, because it's producing your backyard mm. or, but again there are other factors that is outside their own control okay 
So just before we go, uh, Mukta, your, your final thoughts on the, the CBN's uh, relaxation on the restriction of repatriation of FX proceeds by um, international oil companies. And what are your thoughts uh, very quickly? You know, I said it before that that was a that was a, an anti-government thought. This year, I think it was one of your program, and and I said it that how can President Tinubu be there telling them, um, investors you can come in and you can repatriate your money whenever you are, and there we want and the CBN was saying that for international oil companies that you cannot repatriate all that you have. I think that for me was was the challenge. What I'm happy is saying that you, they can replace fifty percent immediately, mm. and but the other fifty percent must be kept here to pay for. Uh, other uh, uh, um, contractual agreement, which for me is still neither there or there, but what again is better than telling them that they don't have to do anything with the fifty percent on for ninety days. And so, so sometimes we, we we tend to think if we want to practice capitalism, we should practice capitalism. If we want to practice socialism, we should practice socialism. Because more or less, sometimes you are telling people right. how to spend their money. So for me, that is a big challenge. But I think. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit better now. Would that help the inflow of FX into the economy? We have to watch and see because for, for the few months now, um, FX seems to have been drying up from what we saw some months ago. Right. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Mokhtar Mohammed, for all of those useful insights. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, Justin. All right, that's the size of the show. We just hope that the federal government uh, just listen to the voice of um, Nigerians, the voice of the people, because this is not the right time to impose unnecessary levies on uh, outrageous levies. I don't know why we should be paying for our own security in the country in as much as we have uh, um, taxes that we pay on a daily, on a monthly, on a yearly basis. It's just not really, really making so much sense to me. I'll leave with that. My name is Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.